Jesus. Here we go. Here we go. What's up, man? Um, what an interesting week. That's what I say. You've got me a good time. All um, right. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Where are you located? So I'm based in London. So okay. I actually live in a place called Battersea. So this is about the thing called Battersea Power Station, which is the largest um, brick building in Europe. So this was all derelict a while back. Uh, the Malaysians came in and dumped like 25 billion on this place. Wow. Yeah. So I've lived here for a bit. It's kind of weird because you're in London, but it's a gated community, which I don't like. Yeah. Um, everyone's hilariously mediocre. Yeah. <laughs> they're rich. They're rich. They're rich. Yeah. They're well they're of the world, but they're uh, they're mediocre. So uh, I move. Yeah. Years. Yeah. Right on, man. Yeah. Though I th speaking of nine eleven, the last time I was in London, I was backpacking in Europe on nine eleven oh one. And wow. I was in Italy and I had a flight that was supposed to go from Paris to Kansas City and it yeah. didn't exist. So I had to get to I had to get to London. I left Gatwick and I remember drinking gin and tonics going underneath the underneath the English Channel and being American. Yeah. They they drove on the other side of the road. and I thought the guy was going to kill us. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah, like... yeah. Well, well, unfortunately, there was a terrible, terrible, terrible incident with one of your ambassador's wives. But that actually happened. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah. Then uh, she's got away, and it's all been a bit of a horrendous, a horrendous mess. But yeah, it's easy done because there are many places that drive on the correct side, like we do, and it's you guys that drive on the wrong side. So. Exactly. We. Did, I. I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, well, we were here first. There That's right. I know. That's the thing. <laughs> well, man, it's great to meet you. And before we get into your life, you have a great story of redemption and 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 grit. And I want to know. How did you survive the last three years with COVID? How did you get through it? And how did it change you? COVID made very little difference to me. Funnily enough, right. COVID, COVID made very little difference to me because my business, my business is healthcare sales. So it made no difference for me. So my life largely didn't change. The problem is, was my life. The fact that it didn't change my life is the problem, right? So I've constructed an existence where I was isolated on my own. I thought that's what I wanted. Well, that's kind of what I wanted because I didn't think of much myself, right? It became like a self-fulfilling prophecy. And there's all sorts of stuff wrapped up into that. When I was actually working with a business to begin with, I was quite purpose-driven. But as it became semi-successful and started generating enough money, uh, I certainly took my foot off the gas. And, you know, the work builds the worth, as they say. And that was part of the problem. I also had a business partner there who, a business partner, who, um, let's say, was quite happy for those things happen so covid the effects of it it that wasn't the issue it really wasn't it's interesting wow so let's get to the heart and soul of what you do for a living today yes if, if so, i put you if i put you in front of a bunch of third graders at a career day and one of the kids says what do you do for a living how do you answer them <laughs> i sell stuff to health systems right so consumables that's it so things that they might be familiar with go on their finger check their um, pulse oximetry. I sell a bunch of that. That's the kind of day job. I also coach people. That's a kind of burgeoning business. That's, you know, the idea you heal yourself, you offer yourself to everyone else. So the day job, the business, healthcare sales, I've been in for over 20 years, uh, but totally unintentionally, like totally unintentionally, I stumbled into it, which, I, which is a, a narrative of my life of, of unintentional, circumstance and not even kind of happy unintentional circumstance yeah um and you know it's it's a good mistress and i've it, i've been i've literally not done anything for four or five years with everything that's been going on with me yet it still survives actually it's all right you know it's only just now it's been getting a kicking and now i actually turn my attention to it and i can do something about that yeah so what did you want to be in the third grade what was your dream to grow up and become that's a bloody good question. I I don't know. I mean, we we obviously were indifferent for third grade. How old are third graders? About ten or eleven years old. Okay. Well, what I should have been is I should have been musical. So I rated second second in my particular academic year in my not very good school. I mean, in the UK, you get streamed um, for a normal kid that isn't being paid for public school. Public schools, private school, peculiarly. Yeah. Um, you can go to grammar school. Grammar school is where, where sort of the normal kids can get streamed for a high level of education. I rated for that, but there wasn't enough space. So I went to what was called the comprehensive and it wasn't good. 
So I, I, I was the like second in quality for music in the year. I should have done that, but because, huh, because I was too concerned about what other people thought, I guess, you know, I didn't see that through. So was the beginning of many of the things I didn't see through. So I should have been musical, but that was probably why I didn't know what I wanted to do. Yeah. So let's get into where you were born and raised and the seeds that were put into you to become who you are today. Yeah, totally. So, so it's kind of, it's, it's like uh, I've got such Irish stubbornness. It's not so genetically. That's, I think, our background. In fact, it is my parents were talking about. So I've, so I've got Celtic genes. I grew up um, in a, a county that's just east of London uh, called Essex. Essex is where the self made man is kind of venerated to come from. It's got a particular attitude. Um, working class come good, that kind of thing. Yeah. And, um, my father had a groundwork, was always, you know, as a groundwork, we had groundworks companies and all throughout my my childhood, he was always doing that. That come with good and bad, you know, that was good fun to be on site with him. But it also came with, let's say, interesting people and, you know, the consequences of that, um, which was helpful, not, <laughs> right? Uh, but I did learn from my parents, you know, that the, the it's just the attitude of to my parents, which was, you just have to get after it and, and, you're you're not limited by your kind i mean my father has learned disability so do i and that's not an excuse um you do the best you can with what you got where you are always and that was always instilled in me um they pushed things hard you know they weren't known for safety i mean pensions what's a pension um my dad was a bit shady uh let's just say that um but that kind of got ingrained in me which is an attitude of you can do it it's something i forgot and it's something i've just got back so who was a hero for you growing up my father yeah yeah totally um you know parents are complicated there's other stuff that's going on but you know being sat in a digger with your dad uh doing that that's a real privilege it's a yeah. real privilege a real one so if you can meet anybody alive on the planet right now someone inspiring who would you love to meet and talk to oh my god um that's an amazing question do you know what actually i meet them all the time yeah i meet them all the time yeah so i i, I literally there's a great so i meditate a lot and in there they say that every interaction is you have a finite number of interactions and you have to make the most out of each one you just shine a bit brighter give a bit more People are amazing. Like every human is amazing. Like every. So I actually, I actually get that every day. That I no, I will put no person on the pedestal. None, like none. Yeah, that's a great answer. What is your motivation? What is it that gets you out of bed? What is it that gets you to accomplish what you want to get done every day? Would well, you know what time I get out of bed? <laughs> Early. Ten past three. Oh wow. Yeah. Good on you. Yeah. Yeah. 10, ten past three. I have morning practice, morning process. It was four o'clock. It got pushed back. So discipline is what makes me get out of bed. But my purpose has moved to me because that was missing and I wasn't feeding myself. And I was, you know, I kind of hated myself to a large, large part of it. It doesn't really matter about how much money you've got. I mean, around here, there's lots of very wealthy people who are smashing themselves to bits emotionally and spiritually. Um, so you have to have it everywhere. Yeah. You have to be everywhere. No, it's it's all it's all it's all areas or nothing, like totally. So for me, it's 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 unpicking the me to to. Have you ever seen that self-made man sculpture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that. It's totally that. It's totally that. I mean, literally today, I've had another. I've I've had a download today, I, an unpicking of something significant. But if you'd have spoken to me yesterday, my voice would have been slightly higher. <laughs> and it's kind of dropped it dropped it's so peculiar yeah that's what's yeah so that, that's 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 what it's service essentially it's service so in your coaching career what has been one of your best success stories uh me no um <laughs> no it's 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 funny it's it's a, it's, it's a burgeoning career but literally there's a guy called tom who was my first client who i met here he was attracted to me because i look less i look a particular way which is very unusual for a man of my age yeah, and I'm 46 and I yeah. look like a tank. And because <laughs> I do so much. 
And I met him and he had drink, had booze with him. And he was saying that well, it was his friends. Apparently that wasn't for him. It wasn't for his friends. It was all for him. And he was puffy, inflamed. But, you know, people, most people think he was actually okay. He wasn't okay. You could see that. It's all in the eyes. And after six weeks, he's like honed up. It's the discipline, the physical endeavor. But it breaks limiting beliefs. And it constructs an idea that you will do difficult things. And one of the most difficult things is resisting your impulses. And if you can do that over an extended period of time and have this baseline discipline, that is enough of a, a sanctuary that you have in, which means you won't back. He will never drink again. Yeah. He will never drink again. I know he won't. Because he yeah. would rather not. And it's all about instilling that. Uh, he's backed off program a bit. He isn't being coached by me. That's part of the problem. But because that's all part of the deal that you commit to yourself by doing that. But, you know, he'll he'll be fine. He'll be fine. And that's amazing for me. Yeah. He's good. So of all the things that you've done and accomplished in your life, what are you the proudest of? Oh, God, saving myself over the last year. But well, actually, no, actually, I'll take this. I'll take that wrong. It's um, it's listening to listening to someone who told me the truth admitting that I didn't have all the answers for me is a hell of a thing. I've just literally, this has just happened again, by the way, and same person, by the way, and then asking for help and then yeah. committing. To it. Yeah. That, that genuinely, everything else is, is like dot to that. Yeah. So let's say you have a dream tonight. You run into the 20 year old version of yourself and you could give that young version of you a piece of advice based oh. on the wisdom that you oh. have. What Nothing. would you what would you tell your young version? Not a thing. Okay. See, I like I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what I'd say. I'd say it'll be all right. Don't worry. And that's even more, more fun. It's like a Nietzsche thing where you walk down the um you walk down the path and you see a being and he's gonna say, You have to live your life over and over and over. Is that is he a demon or is he an angel? And it's like you are the things that you are because yeah. of what you have, and you know, God willing, you actually take the lessons that are all built in there and extract them and that's the job i yeah. think so what's been the best advice you've ever gotten in your life i know the answer is well you know what to do yeah it's literally yeah totally because a lot it's about faith self-faith uh sorry um self-belief and faith and trust and part of the problem is is that of course if you have a pile of evidence to say you're, let's say, not the best and you can't trust yourself or they don't listen to it. But we all know. We all know. And people will try to pull you offline. It's, again, just happened. Where something's happened, shifted. And it's like, no, I'll go back to that. You know. You just have to open up and be confident. It does come with consequences. But, again, you'll be fine. Yeah. And, that, and from that, that's, that's how you build confidence, I think. So I'm curious, if you could have witnessed any event in human history with your own eyes, what would you love to have seen happen? Okay, right. <laughs> this is really, a really good question. Uh, right, so I've got a, my middle name is Tyler. I'm not sure if I'd want to see this happen, but it's curious. Didn't happen too far from here, funny enough. So my middle name is Tyler. Yeah. So what Tyler was this guy's name? He was the first man to raise a rebel, not the first man, but he raised a rebel army. It was what was called the first poll tax rise. Marched on London. Yeah. March on London. Wow. So see what you do in this country is we get we get reminded about our place because of the class system. Uh, and our class system is very different from your class system. Um, way less dynamic. And he it wound up his, his head was put on the Tower of London. Right. So it didn't end well. Yeah. Right. But it's like we have a revolutionary zeal, that, but we've been ruled by such incredibly good controllers of these things. I mean, you you nearly had you had us, and then you kicked us out, but you still have the colour of us all the way through all of your institutions. Yeah, because because and our institutions go all the way back to the bloody Romans. Yeah, so very good at keeping you know the rabble down, and that's what I find. So I'd like to have seen that, and then I'd come back and raise the bloody rabble army. I've had enough. <laughs> there you go. So everyone out there has a perception of you, family, friends, clients, colleagues, but you're in control. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Oh, no, that's a bloody good question. That's involved. That, again, today, this is so peculiar because today that changed. Right. Like literally today. Yeah. So I used to think of, I used to have a kind of quite a hard persona. I do. Have, I mean, you know, I look a particular way. 
but that was kind of constructed. I'm not, I'm so, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm soft, far from it. I'm gentle and, and kind and sensitive. Uh, and what there is, I think, it depends who you are. So some people might see that, some people might not. I think I had to come to terms with that. I was out of out of kilter, and as a result, that gave a, a particular energy for me. Most people wouldn't notice, but if someone was highly empathic, it would it would they would feel the, that that off. Yeah. So my perception is, um, I'm on I, I honest. I'll tell you the truth. I'll tell you the truth. Um, I think truth is beauty. I do. Yeah. Uh, because that's been my experience to be on the other end of it, how difficult, however difficult it was. Um, and I not only have a word, I won't only stick to my word for you, I will stick to my word for me too. Wonderful. Hey, Ross, if anyone out there wants to hire you, learn more about you, anything about your interesting life, where do they go? Okay, thank you. It's um, uh, what, uh, not WhatsApp, uh, Instagram, Ross underscore Tyler underscore Burgess. You'll see me, big bald head, uh, very muscly. That's it. Um, I do a load of burpees. I don't expect everyone to do that, but I do. That's what I do. Yes. Ross, man, you're a great spirit. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I love it. Lovely. Yeah, you're a gem. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a great weekend. Peace.